Welcome back, builders. This week we're taking a look at Middle Age Miklin, Reign of the Lawgiver. Miklin is an ancient tribal empire that has been isolated for centuries. The foul practices of the priest kings of Miklin have caused most of their neighbors to leave or face slavery and blood sacrifice. Since the dawn of the kingdom, blood has been spilled in the temples of the capital. Now a new era has dawned, and the isolation is broken with the coming of the lawgiver. The blood cult has been abolished, and the priests now follow the lawgiver. Isolation has made Miklin a backwards nation, and its warriors use archaic weaponry and armor. The armies are mainly composed of slaves from newly conquered lands. The mage priests of Miklin celebrate the two faces and two dominions of the lawgiver, namely the sun and the moon and the rain and the forest. For national features, Mickland has not changed a lot since early age. In fact, they basically dropped the one thing that they had going for them, which was blood. So let's see what they've got left. For a peoples, they are made up of humans, and we do have one little guest appearance here. We prefer heat scales of plus one. Our military is light infantry with slings and javelins. We also have tribal kings who can levy slaves. And we have Sacred Eagle and Jaguar Warriors. The Eagle Warriors and Jaguars have traded places. The Jaguar is now the cap only. And the Eagle Warrior is now the recruit anywhere. That is a nice change, but does it make up for not progressing at all with your troops? We'll find out. Magic-wise, we have Air, Fire, Astral, Nature, and Water. However, a good chunk of these are cap only mages. And that is going to severely limit the amount of them that you will be able to get out. And we've only got a small selection of non-cap mages. Our priests are powerful. We have some holy threes. We have some holy twos. We have holy ones. Good, good assortment of priests. We are holy three in the capital only. However, they're not slow to recruit. So that's not too bad. For scales and blesses, we can increase our heat limit by plus one, and we have three bonus bless points. And that is the key to trying to make something work with Miklin. You are going with some kind of bless strategy, uh, depending on which unit you're going for. For buildings, we can build primitive fortified cities. So we will build the first level of infrastructure, and then we can upgrade it to the primitive fortified city. It is not as good as a normal nation has, and doubly so in the Middle Era where most people are building castles at least, and the advanced people are already building citadels. So this is another point of falling behind. It should also be noted that uh, because you have to do the two upgrades, you're not really saving a ton of cash there. So a little disappointing there. I believe the first level is uh, 1,200, and the second level I think is 600. So it's not exactly like this is super cheap or something. So take that... As you will, you are going to want a lot of these because you are probably going to have to lean heavily on your recruit anywhere sacred. For sites, we have four sites. These give us our cap only mages and our cap only sacreds. We have the Temple of the Moon, which gives us an astral. We have the Temple of the Sun, which gives us a fire gem. We have the Temple of Sky and Rain, which gives us a water and air gem. And we have the Temple of the Land, which gives us our nature gem. Overall, a pretty good mix of gems there, very useful and things that we can definitely make use of. So that's going to be another aspect, finding ways to effectively use those gems because uh, Mickland ain't happening here on the troop lineup, let me tell you. Units and sacred. Mickland is in a lot of trouble here. Mickland has essentially not changed since their early era incarnation. We are using the same weapons, the same armor. Whereas we have other people that have moved up to plate mail or crossbows. It's pretty dire times here. Let's take a look and see what we have. We have the warrior. This is a naked guy with a hide shield. We have human stats and we have a stone spear and a sling. Uh, pretty bad. Pretty dang bad. I guess it should also be noted they do have forest survival and they are dirt cheap. Next, we have the warrior. This is a the same dude, but now we actually have some armor. Uh, this is one of my main early game rec uh, recruitments. You need something to stand in front of your leadership while your eagle warriors fly and hopefully actually get you kills. These guys at least have nine protection. They are still dirt cheap. Nine, eight, seven. 
They have a leather cap, a hide shield, and a scale mail cuirass. And they've upgraded to a bronze spear and a sling. Overall, you're going to want swarms of these guys on hold and fire or fire and keep distance depending on your leadership. And you're going to use them to just buy time for your eagle warriors to go get some work done. Otherwise, not impressive. Next up, we have warrior. This is the same thing, but now we've moved up to a reinforced leather cap. And our cost has gone up to pay for that, 9, 10, 7. We have a bronze spear again, but we traded out the sling for a javelin. Generally speaking, I think the javelins might do a little better damage, but I'll take the sling just for the amount of shots I can throw. Generally speaking, uh, neither one of these troops is overly impressive. I do think if you prefer these, that's fine. Next up, we have the warrior. This guy has traded out his spear for a mace. 10 attack, 16 blunt damage versus 10 attack, 13 piercing damage. Um, the slightly higher damage might be worthwhile, just depending on what you're attacking into. Same armor, but the mace is much more expensive than the spear, so now we are at 9 gold, 13 resources, 7 recruitment points. I wouldn't get these guys unless I had a reason to, and yeah, even then, if I need the higher damage, I think I'm going to trade out for the Moon Warrior. Moon Warrior is actually one of our better troops. 12 gold, 14 resources, 14 recruitment, but... In addition to forest survival, we have added dark vision. We are much better trained. We have 12 HP. We have 11 attack. And we are using a two handed obsidian club sword. It's a length two weapon, so you might get some repels out of it. And we are decent with it. We have an 11 attack. It does slashing and blunt damage for 19. So if I do need to hit harder, I think I'm switching to these guys rather than the mace guys. They're only slightly more expensive. I think you're going to get better work out of them. They have also upgraded to an iron cap, high tech. Next, we have the feathered warrior. These are interesting in that they are standards. A standard will add plus one to the morale of the unit they're in. Uh, only one standard counts at a time, but they tend to die. So you're going to want a few of them sprinkled in. And they're not horrible. 18 gold, so a little pricey. 13 resources, 21 recruitment. They're using the mace and they're a little bit better at it. So they have an 11 attack and they have a javelin. Don't mix these in with slingers because they'll toss their two javelins and then run in to die anyways. Only use these guys if you're doing javelins or non-ranged troops. Beyond that, he's down to the reinforced leather cap. They're okay. You probably want a few of them. Our morale, if you haven't noticed, 11 here and 10s across the board for everyone we've already looked at. So we're not particularly brave. Now we're getting into some of the better stuff. Uh, let's do our cap only first. We have the Sun Warrior again. He is sacred, he has five fire resist, and he has forest survival. Has a bronze hatchet that he's quite good with. A length 1, 13 attack, 16 slashing damage. He also has a javelin. He is using the Micklin Copper Scale Armor. High tech there. A hide shield and a bronze cap. So 13 protection is on the better side for us. And he's got a pretty good attack. I could see using these guys, but you're probably optimizing for your recruit anywhere. So the usefulness of these guys maybe is a little iffy. Next, we have the cap only Jaguar Warrior. Same as the early age one. We've got the Obsidian Club Sword, Furs and a Leather Cap, and we have Force Survival, and we are Sacred. This will still do shape shifting here, as mentioned down below. I wish they had the shape shifting icon just so people don't get confused, but they're fine if you want to use them. But again, cap only. Finally, we have what's going to probably be your main troop here the Eagle Warrior. This is pretty good. Note, they are not flying unless they are blessed. So you don't get strategic map move of a flyer. You only get it in combat. Second, they are dirt cheap. 15 gold, 3 resources, 14 recruitment points. This tells us we are probably dumping sloth and turmoil because we just don't need those bigger scales to be able to afford them. Third, we are going to need a high amount of dominion strength because we are going to need a lot of these guys because they are armored with furs and a leather cap. They are not well armored. So we need a ton of them. What they are good at, we have two attacks, one of which is a length three, and it is a lance, so you get the bonus for a strike, and it is length three, and you keep it and can repel with it. Those are all very good things with that weapon. Secondly, we have a stone dagger, length zero, but we're better with it at attack 12. Damage-wise, though, 
13 and 11 respectively. That's a problem. Uh, in Dom 5, you would dump a ton into just upping their strength so that they could hit through heavier armor. It's a lot more expensive to do that now, like a lot more expensive. I don't know how val how how valuable that's going to be at the price that you have to pay. One option for these guys would be to strength stack, whether it's strength of the earth or blood surge or other sources of strength, or perhaps going with a weapon bless, that something that you can use their double attacks. Uh, we are flyers and we have a lance. We are still only size three, so you do get three of these guys in a square. So you're going to get six attacks out. You could go quickness. You could get 12 attacks out. So we do have a lot of potential attacks, but our damage leaves a lot to be desired. If you're striking into, let's say, an Olmish troop with eh, only 20, let's not even go with their highest troops, you're going to really struggle to break into a 20 protection target with 11 or 13 damage, even if it is piercing. Finally, we have ambidextrous, so we are quite good with these weapons. We're not giving ourselves penalties for dual wielding them. Overall, this is probably the linchpin of the nation, so plan your bless accordingly. Heroes, commanders, and profit. For heroes, we actually have three, and they're pretty good. We have the King of Legends. This is an undead one. He is death three, blood three, Priest level three, those are all amazing things, things that we do not have for blood and death. If you get him, be very careful with him and start blood hunting like your unlife depends on it because it quite does. Beyond that, if for some reason you weren't going to do it, beyond that, if you weren't going to do it, he is a reanimator priest, which means he can just summon up some long dead uh, with his priest levels. Probably not the play here, though. I think you want to go blood because we don't have any other blood sources. Next, we have the two different Priest Kings. These are shapeshifted quaddles, and they're pretty decent. This is a Fire 2, Air 2, Astral 3, Nature 2, Priest Level 4. None of these magics we can't get, but it's nice just to have it on one dude. He could easily get out there and do some sight searching for you, or um, lead communions, or whatever you need him to do. And he can shapeshift into a Feathered Serpent. Next, we have the Priest King again. This one is Air 3, Astral 3, Nature 2, Priest Level 3. Again, he can shapeshift into a Feathered Serpent. Totally usable. Uh, Air 3 does allow you to get in striking distance of casting Storm solo, because you can spend two gems to buff you up to Air 5 and a gem for the spell itself. Very nice. Otherwise, we are going to struggle to cast that outside of Communions. He himself, however, could get into communions to do it even easier. Very nice unit. For actual commander units, we have a smattering here. We have our own scout. This is a 35 gold, one resource, one recruitment point troop. Per perfectly usable. He's got mountain survival, forest survival, stealthy 50. We have the tribal king. This is our cheaper option for leadership 100 or 100 plus. Uh, he's not too expensive, 125 gold, 15 resources, one recruitment, so you can get two at a time. He is sacred, so he gets whatever bonus you can get off of your bless. He has force survival, he is taskmaster, and he is a slaver. Note, none of these troops down here were slaves. The slaves that he's going to get are ones that he can recruit. It works kind of like blood hunting, and it gets you some absolutely garbage units. Mainly, you would use them for holding up castle walls, doing sieges, going out and patrolling. I'm not a huge fan in middle age of those, but if I did get some blood going, I would totally use this to get up some people to patrol if I wasn't going to just call in birds to do my patrolling for me. Beyond that, he's decently well equipped. He's got our heavy Micklin copper scale armor. He's got a cap on. He's using our two hander and it has a javelin. He's all right. Next, we have a Micklin priest. He is a priest level one sacred. He has seven research and only costs 36 per year. So he's very efficient, but very slow at it. He also has grand communicant. He can enter into communions when you cast ritual spells to make it harder to dispel or better at dispelling something. And he gets a 100% chance of fire or water or astral or nature. We have better options for all of these. However, most of those options are cap only when it comes to fire and water. So maybe this guy would be useful. Next up, we have the Sky Priest. He is Air 1, Priest 1. He has a 10% chance to get the same that we were just looking at. He has a patrol bonus of 10. That's pretty nice. 
He also has Fortune Teller 5 along with Grand Communicate. With the Fortune Teller, I would probably lean towards these guys. 40 gold, so you're paying ever so slightly more than the other one for the same research. But with Fortune Teller and Air, if we can get Storm up, we can Storm Power, and then these guys can do Lightning Strikes. I like these, I think, more than the other one. If you think there's any possibility at all, they can see combat. Next up, we have the Nahulai. This is a very good one. This is the same guy's early age. He shapeshifts into a turkey, because why not? The turkey is a flying chassis, but I don't believe has stealth. Yeah, that's nice for getting around, nice for being able to jump in to support an army, but you still could be spotted. He hems in with Astral 1, Nature 2, and a 10% chance of Astral Death, Nature, Blood. Now, the odds of that are not great. They're 10%, but I didn't get a single one in my test game. I was very sad about that, so do not count on a 10% chance to get something you need. That being said, this is probably your main combat mage. Nature 2 is perfectly fine for getting good nature stuff out. You're going to need him, and he's probably going to need a cornucopia or to use gems or to get into a communion to do big resistance things or bark skin or body ethereal or twist fate. Uh, offensive wise, I think animate tree is very interesting to us because that could buy time for our eagles. Uh, swarm could be good. Lots and lots of good nature stuff. He also has spirit sight, so that can help you seeing those. That does remind me, jumping back to units for a second, on our moon warrior, they actually have dark vision 50. I think I left that out. So yeah, this would be a good guy to pair with those for some buffing if you needed to go underground. Next up, we have the rain priest. This is a Water 2, Priest Level 2, Grand Communicant. This is the first of our cap onlys. This would be useful if you were going to try to point buff quickness or liquid body. That would be very, very helpful on our flyers, especially the quickness. So that would be one reason I would get him. Another one would be he can summon in some of our national creatures. So that's a second reason. And you probably need one to get out and at least do some site searching for you. Next up, we have the Moon Priest. This is an Astral 2, Priest 2, Grand Communicant, has Dark Vision. Again, he could be useful for some early Mind Burn, jumping into Communions for bigger things. I'm less entranced with this guy. I do like Mind Burn as support for expanding, but uh, I think I'm actually going to give it to the Nahuli because they're not sacred. So in the early game, get these guys if you want a combat mage, because that means you can get one more Eagle Warrior per turn compared to a Moon Priest. Next up, we have the Sun Priest. This is a Fire 2 Priest 2 Grand Communicant. Again, he's fine. Early fire things could be just some offensive magic for you. Fire 2 is also enough for the Battle Fury buffs to buff your attack and morale. Two things we would quite, quite like on our troops. Also, don't forget... We do have a little bit of fire income, so you can distill gold with one of these guys. And as Mickland, it's very important that we get those early forts up that also need temples so that we can get more eagle warriors. So you might be very, very money strapped, and this is a way to get a smidgen more. Next up, we have the Priest King. This guy's important. He's a Nature 2 Holy 3, cap only, not slow to recruit. He is not particularly great at casting. He does have 10% chances on our national stuff. He's not particularly efficient at researching 126 gold a year for nine research. But he is, well, I guess he's also a slaver and has Grand Communicant and is a Taskmaster. But all those things could be better done by a Tribal King. The Priest King has 150 leadership. So now you're looking at a plus two bonus to your troops. That would be very handy. He can also do our, our blesses easily because he's a Holy Three. I think that's very valuable. Very, very valuable. Once he gets the blessing out, he has nature too, so he can do some other buffs or even throw some offensive webs or something. Again, just buying time for your eagle warriors. And yeah, I like this guy a lot if I can get him. Uh, do note you are sacrificing one eagle to be able to get him, but this is cap only, so that's only one out of however many forts you have. Next, we have the High Priest of the Sky, cap only. He is air two. Priest level three. Now, he does actually have a 100% chance of fire, water, astral, or nature. Do note that none of those are air, so you're not going to luck into an air three guy very likely. And I don't think any of those 
Maybe the fire gives you some interesting cross paths, but other than that, I don't think any of those have particularly good cross paths. His main problem is he's old. He's 55 out of 50. He's not solar recruit or anything. I do think you get one early to help site search, but he's not really going to help us get that storm that we so, so want. I think we're going to have to rely on probably a sky priest that lucked into astral, maybe, or maybe one of these guys that lucks into the astral and then we boost him up. It's going to be pretty bootleg. So just be careful of blowing out your communion. That all being said, I do think we want storm. While we do use slings and javelins, we're not good at it. And it might be vital that we be able to shut down the enemy crossbows. Keep that in mind for sure. Finally, he has fortune teller 10. That's pretty nice for preventing bad things. Our last cap only guy is a quaddle. Very nice mage here. This is similar to the one you can summon, but actually not as good. I believe the summon one is three astral, three nature. This is three astral, one nature, and we get randoms of air, nature, air, nature, or a 10%. So this is probably the guy that you hope to luck into air two on, and then you get into a communion to be able to do your storm. Um, that's probably more likely... I guess it could go either way, but these guys are also just useful. You can straight up just do anti-magic or any other astral things you need. They are flyers. They do have decent map move at 28. Do note they are magical beings, so certain things can target them because of that. They are cold-blooded, so you may want to consider staying on the heat side of things rather than going cold. Leadership, 100, but he also has inspirational, so he gives a plus two. Overall, pretty good. Note, he doesn't have any armor or anything. And he doesn't have any armor slots. He only has a head and two miscellaneous. So just be careful with these guys. They're size five. They're kind of easy to pick out. But very nice mages. Totally usable. Who would I make my profit? It depends. Uh, if I want to turn one profit, I'm going tribal king. He just becomes a holy three. He's fine to be a prophet. If you can hold out, I would do it on a priest king, preferably. Because that will take him to a holy level four. So we can do fanaticism a spell that we would quite like on our cowardly troops. I think that would help him quite a bit. And he's going to want to lead lots of troops around anyways. He's our best leader. And later on, if I had somebody die, I probably would want a Kawaddle because he can fly map move 28. And that way he could fly around and be the quickest of the throne claimers for us. But because we have recruitable Holy Threes that aren't even slow to recruit, I don't think that's vital or anything, but could, could be useful either way. National items and spells. For national items, we retain our national item, the Jade Knife. The Jade Knife gives us a sacrifice bonus. Note, though, that we cannot sacrifice for Dominion. I don't believe so. Our Dominion works as a normal nation in Middle Age. And even to make this, we would need to luck into a blood because it requires a nature one, blood one. Beyond the sacrifice bonus, I don't think you would want to make these. So kind of a moot point here, but... Maybe you could find another way to do it. Maybe someone can correct me if you can still do blood sacrifices in Middle Age, but I don't believe so since it is not listed as a national feature. For national spells, we actually have a decent smattering here. For national spells, all of our national spells are either in Conjuration or in Blood. In Conjuration, we have Summon Jaguar Toads at 1. We have Summon Jaguars at 3. We have Summon Jade Serpents at 4. I think that's one of our better ones. We have Summon Monster Toads at 5. Summon Quaddle at 6. Those could be nice to supplement our mages if you don't have anything else to do with Nature Gems. We have Summon Tolokwe at 7. Over in Blood, we retain our Blood Summons from Early Age without the availability to actually get enough slaves to do it, but... If you luck into it somehow, here they are. We have Bind Beast Bats, Bind Jaguar Fiends, Contact Civitato, Bind Tizitzmil, Contact Tahu Lahapuchi, Contact Onaki, and Reign of Jaguars. Let's take a look at those units that we can summon in. Starting, I think, with the non -blood, blood summons. So over there, we have our Monster Toads. These guys are all right. Do note they'd have a Poison Cloud. So be careful about friendly firing yourself. They are sacred, however. We have the Jaguars. 
These are sacred and they do have dark vision. Maybe pair these with some moon warriors for some underground expansion. That could be vaguely useful. We have the Kowaddle as similar to our nation, although this guy costs zero upkeep. Do note that. And he comes in as Astral 3, uh, Nature 3. That's pretty handy there. We have the Tolotoke of the East, South, West, and North. Each one of these is interesting. They do make rain fall on the battlefield where they show up. Could be pretty nice if you're finding people who are throwing around fire spells. Do note they are actually demons. They also do break you into blood. So if you are, have your heart set on blood and death stuff, these are the guys that are going to allow you to maybe do that. So this is quite a ways to get up there, though. We take a look at that spell again. This is all the way up at Conjuration 7, and it requires Water 4. We only get a Water 2 guy. Um, so you're going to be looking at doing some boosting or some item crafting to get there. But I do think that this is pretty useful, much more useful than it was in early age because of the blood break in over in blood stuff. We have our beast bats. Same thing applies as before. They're kind of chaffy. They do have a nice venom attack. They are sacred. We have the Azotl. Very, very nice. This is usually nation defining if you have this and an actual blood income. These guys are amazing. We have the Tahu Lalpuchi. Uh, again, pretty nice. This would get you into blood, but you need to be in blood to get them to start with. But they can do some blood hunting for you. They shapeshift into a dog. They are stealthy. Pretty good there. We have the Civiteto. Civiteto is also blood, also death. She does have Reanimator Priest. That's kind of interesting there for this nation. We have the Oniki. This is a very nice high strength death nature and blood on a demon chassis that dominion summons in beast bats very very nice if you were to get there and we have the titsy zimitl this is like a better storm demon kind of they have they throw stellar bolts that are quite quite powerful you can only do magic resist for half damage and yeah good range on them Overall, not going to go into too much detail on the blood ones because it's unlikely you will be able to get there. If you want more detail about those, refer to my early era overview of Michelin where we looked at those much more because they were much more relevant to the nation. I think finally in here, uh, I skipped him for last because I think he's the most useful, the Jade Serpent. This is Conjuration 4, only costs you a few water gems and you need a Nature 2 guy to summon him. It's three gems and you get two of these guys. So pretty efficient. 62 HP, size eight. So they can kind of push to the front. They're sacred amphibians. They have the standard effect. They have poison resistance. They're cold blooded. They have a good attack. If you can buff them up a little bit, I totally think these are worth using. They're going to take whatever bless you have. And even if you can't, you could point buff them with some protection or some body ethereal maybe. And that will keep them going with 62 HP. They have a decent attack, especially if you could give it maybe a little more oomph in your bless. It is death poison. Um, they have the standard effect and they're much less likely to die than most standards. I would love to get lots and lots of these. I think investing your water gems here is not a bad plan if you don't think you're going to make it to those big conjuration uh, summons with the demons of the compass directions. Otherwise, for magic, I think alteration is very, very key on this nation. It's going to give you the availability to do ethereal, to do twist fate. And I want to grant that to other units, especially our eagle warriors. They can use all the defense they can get. We can do bark skin stuff, elemental type stuff. We can do swarm. At five, we have storm, which might be vital. I think going up to six might even be in order here because you can do wooden warriors, giant warriors. Eagle-eyed warriors. I think those are all good buffs. Do note we have a big hole in Earth. We have no Earth on this nation, and that hurts when you're looking at units that would quite like to be buffed. Uh, also an alteration, I don't use this a ton myself, but I think I should. Animate Tree. Animate Tree can be pretty dang powerful, and we have lots of people who are pretty good at casting it. Our Nature 2 guys can do this for 10 fatigue. Get tons and tons of these out to buy time for our Eagles to kill things. Ideally, you'd have like knights attacking trees and shrubs while we kill the leadership in the back with the eagles. That would be very nice. 
I also think that you like Conjuration, especially early up to four. If you're going to go to four, maybe you go to five. That one's a little harder for me to justify. Yeah, I don't know. Monster Toads are OK, but I'm worried about that. You could get Howl off. Maybe you might be able to get a guy with some work that could do winged monkeys. I'm not sure about that, but you definitely want to go high enough to get summon storm power two. And if you're going to go to two, you might as well go to four, I think, for the Jade Serpents. In Evocation, we do have, with Summon Storm Power, people who can spam Lightning Bolt or Shockwave. I think those are both fine. This also would give us Cold Blast, which we can cast, as well as give us Fire Blast, which we can cast, Flare, which we can cast with the Self Buff, Web, which can be pretty useful. So I think two is a great spot. Three would get you Fireball and Stormwind, maybe on that one, would also get you Poison Darts. Do note that Breath of the Dragon at four also is a pretty good combat spell. It is a armor negating spell, and we can easily get lots and lots of nature twos. That's going to be our main battle mage. And if you're fighting things with high, high protection, we don't have a lot of options for dealing with that. I think it's lightning or it's this. And these mages are easier and safer to get than getting the the air mages early. And you need the storm and you need the communion to put up the storm. This is probably the safer bet if you need some offensive magic. Enchantment wise, we do have the Ignite Arrows. We can cast it and that would be pretty good for our Mass Slingers. Beyond that, we also might need to do uh, Flame Ward if we need to protect ourselves from something like that. Poison Ward might be useful, things like that. In Thaumaturgy, we have the Communions, of course. We also have the Battle Fury and the Mind Burn. All are things that we can cast for ourselves. So you can see here, we kind of want a smattering of a lot of different things. We might need boosters, so construction might be useful. We might need, we might even need to get some gear, but who would you put it on? I don't know. I think you're mainly looking at gear that's going to uh, facilitate communions and casting more than like a thug type thing. Although maybe if you've broken into the blood stuff, maybe that becomes more relevant. And you'd also want the sanguine dousing rod if you got there. Let's bring it all together. Mickland is a nation that is stuck in the past and they have left behind the only thing they had going for them, which was blood when the rest of the world has embraced blood or at least started moving in that direction. What do they have? Well, they made a good choice of keeping their recruit anywhere sacreds. The Eagle Warriors are your shining jewel of units. We do have some good casters, but they're they're cap only unfortunately so you need to be very strategic about who you're recruiting when you're recruiting them and not losing them we have an okay summon so gym income could be quite good and you don't have to stick to just your national summons other things could be useful if we could get some earth income somehow and we had an earth caster on our pretender we could summon in a troll king that would give us weapons of sharpness. That would give us strength buffs. We would really like to have those things. Another option would be going with glamour and earth and summoning in or glamour and nature and summoning in a gnome to get break us into some earth stuff there. So there are other options, but they're going to be very difficult to do because we just don't have any variety in our magic beyond what we are pretty good at. Other than that, uh, we do need lots of infrastructure. Uh, this game, this test game has not been going too well. I had an event that killed the palisade I was building here. Literally the turn it was before it would finish. I have one up here. I'm in a war with Ermor early. That's always fun. Uh, at least there I have holy twos and threes that can help fight because he's got 340 undead already. And we're only on turn 16. So I have that to look forward to. Uh, beyond that, I do think having the Holy Threes helps us out. We can try to claim thrones in multiple areas. We can support uh, b uh, banishing different undead uh, nations. That's pretty helpful. But we hurt. We are definitely not on the stronger scale of nations, I would say. And the thing that's going to keep us in this game are all these beautiful eagle warriors. So what we go with for our bless will probably determine our fate. To that end, let's go take a look at some pretender designs. Middle Age Mickland has many of the same chassis that we had in Early Age. A good smattering of things. 
okay access to some blood ones, which may break you into the blood if you're just have your heart heart set on that. Maybe like a fountain blood hunting your cap from like turn one or something crazy like that could be a way to go about it. Do remember that you get a bonus three bless points, and that's going to be very, very important to make use of that. For unique chassis, we have the Colossal Head stuff. We have the Statue of the Bloody Mother. We have the Aztec type ones. I think most notable from those is the Teto Inan. This is a decent chassis. It raises your turmoil limit, so you could go deeper into that. And the growth limit, if you're going to try to do a growth thing, having the earth and nature and blood, you could do something like blood surge and maybe some strength of the earth. Maybe just pay for that with some extra nature levels. Um, I don't think we want regen. The eagles die just far, far too easily. Maybe, maybe. She can kind of sort of expand depending on what your bless is. She comes with 2d6 horned expan um, serpents. Uh, if you were going to try that, though, be careful. She's only got 13 protection. It's not going to not going to end well for you uh, if you go solo. Maybe if you go with the army, that would be OK. Past that, we have the Hun Balam. That is the uh, Jaguar. We have the Demon Macaw. We have the Bolen Tiku. Kind of an interesting one, but invulnerability 15 just doesn't do it. You really need invulnerability 25 if you're going to go that route, since you can't buff that. That's unfortunate here and not enough HP to support it anyways. Uh, you could go a dragon here. Um, the sloth doesn't really hurt us. This guy right here is very interesting because he is sloth limit and turmoil limit. So we could take both of those even lower. And at that point, maybe we would start having problems with our recruitment, but those Eagle Warriors are mighty cheap. So that would be two extra scales we could dump. And he has lightning. He does shapeshift into a storm father. I don't think this is going to be a great one for just straight combat. Uh, 18's not enough. You would have to go hard skin at least. And I don't even know what you go with on the air for him. Um, Stormflight, I suppose. Uh, that's not a great... That combination specifically is not a great thing for our sacreds. Uh, down in the size ones, we have Lawgiver, very important figure for middle aged Micklin, but not a particularly amazing guy. Uh, I don't think we're going to order. We just don't need the recruitment points. We're not going to be major blood hunting, most likely. We have all of these paths already in our nation. He does shapeshift into a feathered serpent. So let's take a look at a couple I have designed. First up, we have Palakos, the Sacred Geyser. This one here is in Awake. We went with two incarnates. We have Quickness and Vitriol Weapons. Vitriol Weapons are pretty nice. This is seven armor piercing acid damage. So even if you don't fully break through and kill a target, if they're using iron, which is very common now in Middle Age, you can rust it, which makes it less effective and easier to break. So that can be pretty nice there. And we have quickness. So the combination of those means that three Eagle Warriors in a single square can get off 12 attacks in a single turn. Those are 12 acid attacks. So that's a lot of added damage, possibly. And even if you don't break through, the hit is what triggers the acid, not doing damage like it's a poison or something like that. It does give us some research to get started. Uh, beyond that, I mean, you're stuck in your capital, so you're basically going to be researching or maybe casting a couple rituals. You could do fires from afar, maybe that could be something. Uh, otherwise, I don't think he has too, too much to be doing. Uh, note here, we do have at least a little bit of positive scales, although I did go down to cold to pay for this. So seven uh, domain strength is pretty good. That's a lot of eagles, uh, a lot of quickness, vitriol weapons going off. Uh, second one I did is Lawbone, the good old reliable Demulich. I do think this is justified here because this is an expensive, expensive bless. This is Death Weapons, Stygian Flesh, and Stormflight. This is a combination early, late game bless for your Eagles. Stygian Flesh will raise their protection up to about 14 or 15, enough that you probably won't get killed by commanders or archers. We are probably going to land on. Death weapons is super nice because 
you don't have to damage, you only have to hit. So even when you plink off their shield with your stone dagger, you get a two armor negating roll. Now note, that's not two damage. It's two plus a DRN versus their magic resistance, blah, blah, blah stuff. So this actually ends up being about six or seven damage on average um, over a few attacks. It's pretty decent. This is something you could do against Ohm, who is a a very big worry of how you're going to hurt Ohm. This negates all that armor they have and hits right into their weakness, which is magic resistance. So that would be very, very nice there. Sijian Flesh, magic weapons are less common than they used to be, um, both meta-wise and in the early age. So this is going to last you a bit longer, at least. And hopefully... Their sacreds will be fighting your crap troops in the front and not your sacreds that have landed in their back row. And to support that, we take Stormflight. So later on, when we put up Storm to protect from crossbow bolts and to allow us to summon Storm Power, uh, we can still fly. So we can do our full hold. We can try to get the Storm off right away, and then we can still fly. If you waddle into combat with Eagle Warriors, they will die. If the archers or your own slings don't kill you, you will just die as you make contact. You really need to get that first alpha strike in, kind of like Kalem, where you just wipe out a big old chunk on the land and hopefully just route the unit you touched and start kind of a cascade of people having to retreat. Those are the two I made. I like both of them. I did like the Lawbone a lot more. I, I think this is interesting. I like death weapons. I never get to use it. He also ended up with more Dominion Strength, so we could get eight Eagle Warriors per uh, fort out, and that's very, very, very nice. We also stayed warm, so we don't have to worry about some of the cold-blooded summons that we might want to use having problems. And I did go Fortune 1 here because I don't like having tons of turmoil and not, but you could sub this out for a Magic Scale. The Magic Scale would really help your research. Alternatively, you could also go down to Cold, and that could get you a, a research scale, uh, a magic scale. And that would really help your research. We do need magic if we're going to do anything. Uh, the, the strength of our sacreds alone will not carry the day. You definitely need to get either some buffing for them to stay effective or have some sort of offensive magic or summons or something else to help your army out. So those are the two that I was playing around with. Uh, my testing this week got a little bit shortened. I had horrendous audio problems the last week, and I spent the entire weekend uh, playing email tag with Elgato's support, and I ended up hopefully solving it myself. And if this video is coming out, hopefully that means that I have it fixed. But we'll see. We'll see if they have any further tips to fix my issue in the future. But beyond that, if you have some imprisoned, that's what I didn't get time to test. Uh, if you have imprisoned suggestions, that's what I would be curious about. I don't generally go with imprisoned gods, but this is a nation that maybe you could do it. I do know that poison weapons could be done. It's not incarnate, but we would have to go to death scale for that. I'm not sure I'm in love with death scale, but then again, having 14 or, or 21 eagles drop in, they have multiple attacks and they have poison weapons, but... Then again, we also have to breach protection to get poison to proc. So maybe that's not so good there. So give me some imprisoned uh, pretenders or maybe even some awake expanders. Both of these are immobiles. Uh, I do like immobiles on nations that have recruitable holy threes. And I think that shows here, but I'm open to other suggestions for sure. If you've had any success with middle age, Micklin, tell me your stories, because uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, on the lower scale of power for the age. They are they're at a low point. They picked the wrong time to get rid of blood with the increased population. Their blood tactic would have been way better in middle age than it was in early age. All right. In conclusion, Mickland is a nation stuck in the past that is going to rely on its sacreds and a huge bless backed up, hopefully relatively quickly with some decent nature astral mage support, along with some specialist mage support out of your capital. And if you can make all that work together, I do think it's a cool nation. I do like the flavor. You know, as much as we meme on Mickland, I do think they're kind of a cool nation and they're very different. Like 
uh, nations that just don't progress. In fact, in some ways, we're going to regress when we go to late age. So, yeah, it, it's it's interesting and different. And I would love to know your thoughts on this one. Uh, I figured we'd throw in a little bit of a curveball here before we head into next week, which will be uh, another very cool nation. And I will let you find out what that's going to be if you're not already in the know. All right. Take care, builders. Get out there and recruit some eagle warriors and build yourself a bless. I'll catch you on stream.